Hey, how's everyone doing? Hope everything's going well. I uh, said I wasn't going to buy any more guitars. Uh, and then Amazon Prime Days got me because I had this on my list and it popped up as a Prime Day sale. And I got it cheap enough. Uh, it, I'll probably play with a little bit, do a video, and then maybe sell it and not, not get hurt too bad on it. Um, let's open it up and see what we got here. Again, these, some of these Chinese import guitars um, have this styrofoam packing, which I'm sure is terrible for the environment, but it's really good for the guitar. Uh, it's a great way, great way to ship. The West Creek Bumblebee um, dual humbucker, kind of a cool little offset body shape, kind of SG esque, except it's got the offset. Kind of like the racing stripes. Pretty nice looking guitar, nice binding on the neck, um, fretwork. The edges, at least, pretty impeccable. Um, got the SG style input jack on the front. It's got a single control cavity on the back. Single three-way switch, two humbuckers. I'll. Uh, like the action's pretty high. It's not terrible. It's too high for me, but it's 1.7 millimeters on the low E. 1.5 on the high E. Again, it's not, it's not terrible. Um, those nut slots definitely need to come down some. That's the same so I'm, same kind of stuff I saw on that West Creek uh, double cut, the DC that I looked at. Um, frets are a little smoother on this, but not, not a lot. They still need some smoothing. Again, nothing major, nothing that can't be addressed pretty quickly and pretty easily. Um, all right, I just remembered... On that last one, the, uh, the action seemed way too high, and what it actually was was the truss rod needed adjustment. So I just did a quick adjustment on that truss rod, and now the action's right about where I like it. It's about 1.4 millimeters on the low side and about 1.3 on the high side. That pickup looks pretty low in there, uh, and it's at a bit of an angle. It's, I'm not sure if you can see that. Um, it's not really level with that pickup guard, so I'm not sure if they've got springs under there. Hmm. Yeah, it's pretty interesting probably change these strings because who knows what's on it um let's go ahead and check some pickup measurements while we're at it that's the neck pickup 7.56 kilo ohms 3.04 henry's it's probably a decent sounding neck pickup Bridge pickups, 2.65 Henry's and 8.22 kilo ohms. Good, 
I think that, in my opinion, those are those are good readings on a on a humbucker set. Let's get the weight before we do anything else and see see how much this thing weighs. It feels pretty light. Hundred and twenty ounces, three point four kilograms, seven pounds eight ounces. That's that's a little heavier than I expected. Uh, still a pretty light guitar. Um, I don't think you're going to have any problems with neck dive. I don't know. Maybe, maybe. We'll see. We'll get it played a little bit and see what we think about it. Um, Probably going to address those nut slots first because that's that's pretty high up there. <clears throat> All right, let's get these strings changed. We'll uh, try to see what's going on with this pickup. It's not level at all. Before I do anything else, I want to add some oil to this fretboard because it's it's pretty dry from the long trip from China. I'll get the first first coat of, coat of oil on it and let that sink in. I'll uh, polish up these frets and then put some more oil on it to top it off before I put the strings back on it. Occasionally I'll use my drill to do stuff like this but it's honestly pretty risky one slip and you've got a big gouge in your finish so <clears throat> That's very interesting. Show you. Let me get this one out. Got two different size screws in these pickup rings. Little bitty, little bitty short one in the back, and noticeably longer ones in the bridge side. So we just got springs in there and then I guess the way, yeah, the, the pickup wire goes straight through the body that way and I think the pickup wire is pushing that pickup up that way. <clears throat> I might try to put a little piece of foam in there. It does look like there's a little bit of shielding in that pickup cavity. But it's not very well done. Um, yeah, it's it's shielding paint, but it's it's pretty splotchy. Let's see if I can get a little bit closer. It's pretty splotchy and it's not grounded, so it doesn't it doesn't really accomplish much. Uh, people don't seem to understand what the shielding's doing. Um, but if the shielding in a guitar is not grounded, then it doesn't really matter. Um, be interested to see so that post is grounded. That one's not, but it doesn't need to be. The bridge is not grounded, but the tailpiece is, which is good because that's where you're going to connect to your strings. That pickup cover's connected to ground, that pickup cover's connected to ground. So yeah, I mean the, 
guitar electronics and, and tail pieces grounded. And that's good enough. Um, I wonder. Okay, <clears throat> when I find foam that I think will work good <laughs> under pickups, and a lot of times uh, the, the packaging that pickups come in will have some good foam in it. And I save it and put it away somewhere and then I never know where the hell I put it. So I've got this applicator pad. I just cut a piece off of that. I think that's gonna that's gonna work pretty well. Um, I'm gonna put it under the it's still really interesting. They've got the long screws on this side and the short ones on this side because that pickup ring is not that much thicker. It's maybe beveled slightly. Certainly not enough to need different size screws. But it's nice that they at least think about stuff like that. Shows a little more attention to detail than you might expect from low-cost guitar yeah that's that's much better get that bridge off because I know it's gonna fall out when I flip it over let's look in the control cavity All right. got full-size pots which is kind of cool A decent little mechanical switch um, I'll try to zoom in and see what those capacitors are um, I think those are 47s I'm not sure I may be able to measure them. Yeah, it's measuring 43, so it's it's a 47. Again, shielding paint in here, but you can see the yellow shining through it. <clears throat> so it's not, probably not doing what it's supposed to do. So it's conducting from there to there, um, but it's not from the side to the bottom. And so yeah, we've got a little, little connection from the side to that pot. Um, Nothing from the bottom of the control cavity. Yeah, we got a little bit right there. So, kind of a half-ass shielding. It's better than nothing. Um, it's not nearly as important with humbuckers because they're not going to pick up nearly as much of the environmental noise as a single coil. Let's go ahead and... Peel the tape off because that's that's a fun part of this job. All right, <clears throat> let's frets are not terrible. <clears throat> they did feel a little a little gritty. Just gonna run across them with this thousand grit fret eraser. These uh can't really read these anymore. These are a fret eraser kit. I'll try to find them and post a link in the description. Um, 
they work really well. This set goes from 100 to 400 to 1,000. Um, these were not bad, so I just ran over them with 1,000. The nut was not as bad as I initially thought it was. The G-string the G was a little high, and the B-string was a little high. I really like these Music Nomad uh, diamond files. Um, they work really well. They almost work too well because that diamond will go through a nut in a hurry if you're not careful. So you gotta you gotta be pretty cautious with it. Um, but again, this one honestly didn't need that much. So I took it down a little and called it good. One more treatment with the oil, F1 oil from Music Nomad. I've had this same bottle forever and I've used it on a bunch of guitars. Um, it seems to last quite a while as long as you're not getting crazy with it. It's darkening up that fretboard um, and getting rid of some of the I noticed this on that last West Creek I looked at too. There's some like buffing compound stuck in the grain on the fretboard and this kind of eliminates that. The other thing that's really cool on this guitar um, is these. Got some pretty cool fret markers. These little double arrow fret markers. And then at the 12th fret it's got like a red inlay around the perloid that's on there. Pretty, pretty cool design. These headstocks, I think, are pretty cool. I'm glad they just didn't copy Gibson or Epiphone or some of the other guitars. They, they went their own way, created the asymmetrical headstock. Um, I don't know if that's a decal or an inlay, but it's it's nice. There's some nice reflective qualities to it. The other thing I noticed, this, this is kind of an ABR1 style bridge. Um, they've got the screws pointing towards the tailpiece, which is pretty sure not how Gibson does it, but you know, the intonation's right, so I'm not going to bother with trying to change it. Let's get some strings back on here. This is my my bulk box of strings. I really I really gotta dig this thing. Um, they just luckily Diodarios are color coded so you can pull what you want out of there. Um, I always use the XL 9-42s. That's just what I started with and kind of what I've gotten used to, so that's what I use. I'll tell you what, <clears throat> my eyes are so bad. <clears throat> that B and E string is kind of a challenge to get through those holes. <clears throat> I've got pretty good lighting in here, so I can't even blame it on the lighting. It's just my eyes don't don't focus on things even with my magnifiers on. All right, let's get this thing. Let's get this thing tuned up, plugged in. Let's see what we're working with. All right, as I'm tuning, I thought I might show you this little tool here too. Um, it's got some, I suspect those are supposed to be, that looks like a tuning. Yeah, I don't think that's gonna work very well, but that's not the point. 
the point of this is to help stretch your strings. Um, kind of slide it under there and get a nice little nice little bend on that string. I can't remember who it was. I think it may have been Eddie Van Halen's guitar tech on a video using one of these and he had he had multiple because you can kind of see how you cut grooves in it, especially if you're going fast. Um, you probably damage one of these over time. But he was doing multiple guitars at a time and going pretty quick up and down, generating some heat and damaging the tool. But it does help you get those strings stretched out a little quicker than you otherwise would be able to. All right, let's try to get some sound out of this. I'm using this Super Champ X2. A um, little bit of noise in this room, not terrible. There are three AC condenser units directly above us on the roof of this building. So when when one or more of them is running, it can get it can get really noisy down here. Uh, I'm running on the clean channel. A little bit of reverb on um, volumes on about three because if I turn it up any louder I'm running through a 1 by 12 cab and it just starts rattling stuff in this room um, <laughs> This amp I'm running on voice 10 which is a supposed to be a box AC 30 that was the bridge now that was the middle this is the bridge for some reason. I, I tend to like the tone. ridiculous pick. It's the only one I could find down here. Um, I don't know if anybody else is as bad at losing picks as I am. One of these, I think it's a Dunlop 1.25. It's a little thicker than what I like to use. Not that it matters. I, I struggle. I struggle either way. <laughs> Thank you. 
some distortion, try to get on that bridge. <laughs> gives you an idea of what these pickups sound like um, they sound good I mean they sound like humbuckers there's there's quite a bit of clarity they're not too muddy in any position um, they're not high output um, if you crank your amp you're gonna get some some drive out of it I've got the amp relatively low right now um, <laughs> And so it's not doing a whole lot, um, but it does what it's supposed to do. Um, I, the other thing I'll say, I'll mention on here is that these tuners are not bad for the generic uh, import tuners that every guitar like this puts on them. They actually work pretty well. There's no dead spots. There's no uh, stiffness they actually turn pretty smoothly they're not as as nice as nice tuners obviously but they're they're certainly workable um this guitar's it's cool looking um it's a pretty finish it's a well-made guitar it's not my cup of tea um i'm more into natural finishes um i like my i like my les paul cherry burst um I like my plain finishes. I like that off-white Telecaster that I've got a lot. Um, this is flashy. If you're into flashy, this is your this is your jam right here. I think these are around two hundred and nineteen dollars. I'll look to make sure. I think they're around two hundred and nineteen dollars on Amazon normally. Sometimes you can find them discounted. I got it quite a bit less than that uh, during the Prime days, but of course that's over. That was that was April 16th and 17th, I think. Um, so the only reason I bought this is just because it was a good enough deal. I figured I could play with, with it a little bit and then sell it and get back at least most of what I, what I paid for it. Um, kind of a catch and release program. So let me know what you think. I appreciate all the likes and comments and subscriptions. Even the, even the trolls sometimes are entertaining. I um, hope everyone's having a good day and take care of yourself.